Welcome Engineering Statics. This is ENGR Ampersand 214 at Bellingham Technical College and this is the second of two lectures on distributed loads. So in our last lecture we did some derivation of formulas and approaches uh, to use for distributed loads. We invoked the idea of a small bit of force over an infinitesimally small length under a, length, a force per unit length distributed load and then we defined a little bit of moment due to that that infinitesimal bit of force at a particular location um, along the length of the distributed load. And then we used our uh, moment of the sum equals the sum of the moments to equate an expression for the position of the single force resultant with uh, the results of our, our distributed load integration both to create the force expression in the moment. And so we're now able to get a single force resultant at a particular location, applied at a particular location that gives us an equipollent force moment system to our distributed load and will make uh, writing conditions of equilibrium much easier. So we're going to apply that with some numbers. Uh, we did an application with variables in terms of length and max height of a distributed load and now we're going to we're going to put some numbers and this will give us an, uh, uh, some practice keeping our track of our units which is very dead on useful uh, to make sure we haven't made a mistake. So we've got a beam <clears throat> and it's it's attached at a pivot hinge at one point so this can push up and back and forth but it allows the beam to rotate it's got a roller and so this is a point that doesn't apply any any substantial loads in the horizontal direction which by the way we've defined as X and we have also this symbol here with the X and the arrow and the circle this means we've defined uh, the origin of an X axis at this point at the hinge point so this is our X equals zero X being a distance along the length of the beam and we have this funny um, hinge roller system which basically means we can apply a force upward at this end of the beam. Uh, the rollers mean it can't it can't apply any appreciable force in the horizontal direction uh, and of course it allows it to rotate freely back around that hinge. Okay, So we got a distributed load being applied to this beam. Could be weight uh, of the beam plus maybe another applied load, maybe some differential pressure for that triangular component. And we're going to call this distributed load function Q of X. So Q as a function of X. Q is kind of our go-to letter that uh, that describes a distributed load. So Q, F, and M are distributed load, force, and moment, usually due to the same thing. Um, so the value of Q sub X at X equals zero is 500 newtons per meter. That's a division. And over here it's it's a bit higher. It's 800 newtons per meter. So we want to know what the equivalent for resultant force and its position are. So we're going to go through the same steps we did before. And first we got to get a continuous expression for Q sub X. So hey, it's a line function again. And the only difference from our last example is the y-intercept isn't zero. So we can just calculate a slope and we know our y-intercept is 500 newtons per meter. So y-intercept being the, the y-position when that line crosses x equals zero, our definition from algebra. So here's our line function, our, our line that describes q, sub et, q of x. So we have our, uh, our slope, which is the y at, uh, at x equals 9 minus y at x equals 0. So 800 minus 500 divided by 9 meters minus 0 meters plus b, our, our y-intercept at 500 newtons per meter. And we simplify this and we get a distributed load at any point x is equal to 300 divided by 9 newtons per meter squared times x plus 500 newtons per meter. How do we get per meter squared? Well, we had newtons per meter in the y and we divided it by meters. 
If I put in an x value of 5 meters, I'll have meters canceling out and so both of my terms will be newtons per meter, which is what I know I should have for distributed load. So that's the, the value of having, <coughs> excuse me, units in there. Okay, I have a distributed load and all I have to do to get the force resultant is add up every little bit of this from x equals 0 to the end of where it's applied, which is x equals 9. So I will use an integral to do that. So here's my, my integrated expression. Here's my bit of force, distributed load in newtons per meter times a little bit of length in meters will give me force in newtons and I'm just going to add up every bit of those little bits of newtons of force from 0 to some x and then I'll plop in the limits of integration. So I'm going to take the expression that I just derived for q, I put it in here for q, so now I am integrating this line function with respect to x and I have a couple more polynomials so I'll follow my rule for finding the function for which if I took its derivative I would get this sum and so we know that the derivative uh, to get the derivative of a sum uh, we can just take the derivative of each of the two um, addends of, that make up that sum and treat them separately so we can literally break the integral up and do each of these terms separately it's pretty easy so we're going to end up getting the integral of basically a polynomial here and this is what we get we get this one half x squared term and so the one half is multiplied by the nine we have 300 divided by 18 we retain the same units we have an x squared plus 500 times x so if we took the derivative of 500 newtons per meter times x we get 500 so there's our check now let's think about our let's do a quick units check this is force anywhere okay and when I evaluate this between my limits of integration I'll get the cumulative force over whatever portion of this that I'm going to take and I'm going to take it all the way out to 9 meters x is in meters this should we should get a, a force unit for this whole expression so I have newtons per meter squared I'm going to put in some length in meters the meter squared cancel yep I'm left with force units I have newtons per meter and then I'm going to multiply that by a position in meters those cancel we get newtons so that's a good indication that I did my integral correctly and that I have the right units just a real quick check of units okay I'm going to I'm going to move on and I'm going to get a general expression for moment I'm not going to evaluate this all the way out to 9 I'm going to just write this out first so here's a bit of moment due to this bit of force due to that distributed load so here's my my sum sum of the moments here's a bit of moment and I'm going to sum up all of them from 0 to x so I've got x times my my line function so here's that with our functions you know plopped in substituted <laughs> substituted is another word for plopped in so I have my line function times x so now I have an x squared and an x so I've basically just multiplied this expression this continuous line for q of x times x so now I've got an x squared here and I got an x there so I'm going to integrate this with respect to x okay follow the same rules of integration and I'm going to get 100 divided by 9 newtons per meter squared times x cubed and then I'm going to have 250 newtons per meter times x squared that's following those same rules to integrate polynomials if you took the derivative of this expression using your rules for derivatives you should get this if you took the derivative with respect to x of course we're going to integrate and take derivatives with respect to whatever this says here this tells us what to integrate with respect to okay let's do a units check again we have newtons per meter squared and then I'm going to get newtons cubed or excuse me meters cubed meters cubed from our length um, and we'll end up with newton meters which is a moment uh, unit that's good so in this case we've got newtons per meter times meter squared we'll get newton meters so we've got the correct units okay so 
Now all we have to do to get our force resultant is put in 9 meters for our upper limit of integration, and this was 0 meters down here. Evaluate this term at 9 meters and subtract this term evaluated at 0 meters, and that ends up being 0 at the lower limit, and we end up getting 5,850 newtons for the magnitude of our force resultant. It is pointing down. We get its total moment by evaluating our moment expression over that same range. It has to be the same range. We're, we're adding up we're adding up the moment due to the same force, so we got to integrate over the same or over the same length. And we get uh, 28,350 newton meters. And then we apply our moment of the sum, the sum being the force resultant, uh, equals the sum of the moments, which was our integrated expression, uh, and we can get our x sub r, and so what that means is we just divided this number by this number, um, and we get 4.846 meters, and then lop that off to the appropriate number of significant figures based on, on whatever we were given here, so this would be three significant figures, two decimal places, whatever smaller. So we know the force is going in the negative j hat direction. The resultant moment is going to be in the negative k hat direction. Let's just make sure that's correct. Downward did the right hand rule. Yes, it's going into the paper and it's about four, just, just a bit under five meters. So let's do a sanity check. We're pretty sure that if, if this were a rectangular force, it was constant. Um, the moment the resultant force unit would, would be in the middle, thinking in terms of the centroid of that shape. Uh, so it would be at four and a half meters. So given the fact that it's, it's a little higher on this side, we know that force resultant better be on this side of the distribution. And so it was 4.85, so it was a bit over to the side. So that does make some sense. So there's a, a bit of a sanity check. Okay, and that leads us to another way. Uh, the, the sum of the moments equals the moment of the sum can be applied a lot of different ways. Um, our cross product rule gives us a lot of flexibility. So a, a shortcut uh, to doing this might be if we didn't want to get a line equation for this, this distributed load, we could use what, what will be known in centroids as the method of composite parts to break this up into basically two portions of the force distribution that sum together. So I could take this kind of trapezoidal shaped distributed load and I could say, well, I could make this by adding a rectangular constant distributed load of 500 newtons per meter that stays constant over the whole nine meters. And I could add this to um, a sort of a triangular shaped distributed load that starts at zero at x equals zero and ramps up uh, to 300 newton per meters, uh, newton per meter at our x equals nine. Uh, I could evaluate the integrals of these two functions to get our resultant force from each one. I could go through the same argument that I did for calculating their resultant moments and get a position for each of these subcomponents of distributed force, and then I could end up getting a total resultant using the moment of, the, of those two kind of subsums. And the magic of that is you might already know what the area under a triangular distribution load is and its, its um, resultant application point. And the same thing for a rectangular distributed load. So this almost allows us to do this by inspection. For instance, we got 500 Newton per meters constant due to this component one of our force distribution. So we could just multiply nine times 500 and get the total area under this curve, and it would be in newtons. So we would get 4,500 newtons, and we could use the area under a triangle to do the same thing for this one. So we would get 300 times nine divided by two newtons. I could go through the same argument about moment if I, if I knew, for instance, that the centroid of a triangle was two-thirds of the way from, from this point, 
I would know my, my x sub r for my force resultant on this. I would know that the resultant force of my rectangular distribution was located right in the middle. So I could say that the moment of the combo of 1 plus 2 would be equal to the sum of the moment applied by, you know, triangular portion plus the moment applied by the rectangular portion, triangular plus rectangular. So I could, because I already effectively know the centroid point and the area under the curve for these two shapes of force distributions, I could kind of get out of having to do all that integration. Uh, maybe if I didn't have time um, and I already knew, I already had that information. But I can also use integrals to prove that that's true. So I'm not going to step through all the integrals this time because we basically just did that. Uh, but we can just jump right to the results again here. So we've defined an x sub r. So a, a position of the resultant for force 1 is equal to the moment due to force 1 divided by the total force. So I'd have that position and the same for 2. So I can grab the I can grab the the numbers that I got out of the of evaluating these at the limits of integration. So not surprisingly, our, our total force of the rectangular portion is 4,500 newtons. So that's the total force due to this. And then it's of course applied right dead center, and it exerts a moment of 20,250 newton meters. I know I go. I went through my integration and I checked myself on my triangular portion. A uh, one half base height <laughs> ends up being 1,350 newtons, and it ends up applying a moment of 8,100 uh, newton meters, and it's of course exerted at two thirds of uh, the way across the base from the the small end and that ends up being at 6 meters. Now, if I were to, to calculate the total moment uh, due to that entire load, it should be equal to 8100 newton meters plus uh, 20,250 newton meters. And uh, I believe if these were the same numbers on the previous example, you could add those up and then compare them to, to this number right here that you got. So you could get the total moment uh, of the total force resultant. Well, you also know that the total force exerted by this portion of the distributed load plus this is just simply the two forces added. So you would get 4,500 newton meters plus uh, 1,350. So you would add those two for a, a total force resultant and then divide that by your total moment and you would get the position of the the sum total resultant and you can show this over here force resultant due to the triangular load here's a force resultant due to the rectangular load the sum of the moments due to these two forces is equal to the moment due to their sum at some x sub r which is going to be between between them somewhere and of course, if you evaluate that, you get the same result you got on the previous page. So moment of the sum equal to the sum of the moments can be applied continuously with an integral um, or just adding up the contributions of subcomponents of a distributed load plus maybe you had some discrete point contact loads. So that is another maybe simpler way of doing things than walking through a whole bunch of integration and we just proved that it gets you to the same point. So one concept applied many ways to make your life easier and more accurate. So that is the end of this lecture. This is, completes our section on distributed loads and so now um, the key is to practice and uh, as a warning please do not shortcut things. Uh, don't, uh, don't apply what you think are centroids of things. Uh, positions are very important and it is always best to go back and check yourself with an integral using a coordinate system that you've applied and your zero point is essential getting that set up and knowing what your distributed load is um, at whatever you define as your x equals zero 
and uh, whatever your other limit is uh, that you're considering. Thank you.